This lesson deals with node voltage properties. You can find these notes in the ECE201 ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 1. In this chapter we're going to take a look at a couple techniques for reducing the number of equations we have to write to solve for the response of a circuit. By using node voltages instead of element voltages, we can reduce the number of equations that we have to solve simultaneously. The node voltages of a circuit are defined as the voltages between all of the nodes and a single reference point. Suppose we have a circuit here with three nodes and a fourth node here we're going to call the reference. We'll assign the reference node a minus sign and then all the other nodes will assign a plus sign. Now the actual value of voltage can be positive or negative, but this is just going to be our notation for selecting the variables. Once we know the node voltages in a circuit, we'll be able to find the voltages across any element. And this is called the node voltage property. If the kth two terminal element is connected between two nodes, x and y, then the element voltage can be expressed in terms of these two node voltages as the difference of x minus y. Showing this with a schematic picture, here's an element in a circuit, call this node x and node y, and that there's a voltage from x to the reference and from y to the reference, and then the voltage across this element is node x minus node y. Now why would that be true? Well, let's just do a Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop here. The rise in voltage would equal the drops, so the rise in voltage is v sub x, the drop is v sub k plus v sub y. So we just take this and solve for v sub k. Just bring this on the other side of the equation and we get v sub x minus v sub y. There's also one other case, and that is when one of the nodes is also the reference node. In that case, the voltage across the kth element is the node voltage, in this case we'll call it v sub x. We can show why that's true by just setting v sub y equal to zero. And now we've got this node voltage, which is v sub x minus v sub y, which is zero, which is just equal then to just v sub x. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose that I have four nodes, and I pick one node as reference, and I'll label this as a, b, and c. Suppose that I'm able to measure the value of the node voltage a, b, and c, and that'd be from node a the reference, node b to the reference, node c to the reference. Suppose that's equal to 5, 10, and minus 3. Knowing these three voltages, could you find the voltages across the five elements that are in this circuit? Voltage 1 is node voltage b, really minus 0, it's equal to 10. Element 2 is right here, it would be this node voltage, which is 0, minus v sub c, which is equal to minus 3, and so we get a plus 3. Element 3's voltage here would be v sub b, minus v sub c, and that was 10 minus a minus 3, so that'd be 13. Element 4 here would be node voltage a minus node voltage c. Node voltage a was 5, node voltage c was minus 3, and that would give me 8 volts. And lastly, element 5 is here, be node voltage a minus node voltage b. That's going to be equal to 5 volts minus 10 volts, so you get minus 5. So again, we can assign voltages across elements, and they may turn out to be positive or negative. It's just you pick a orientation of the signs, and you're just going to solve for it. Interesting here is that we found three node voltages in the circuit, and there were five element or branch voltages, and we're able to find all of those in terms of the node voltages. In an n node circuit, there are n minus one node voltages, because we're going to pick one node as reference. This turns out to be the minimum set of unknowns that you need to solve any circuit problem. I won't prove this, but it's not hard to give you a quick argument. If you know the node voltage is in a circuit, then the voltage across every element is either a difference of two node voltages or just simply the node voltage itself. So that's the least number of things you would have to know to be able to solve a problem. And these are the properties of node voltages.